That's a nice fish. The musky lunge is a large, sharp-toothed predatory freshwater fish unlike any other in our world. And fishing for musky is unlike any other type of fishing. Musky are crafty, cautious eaters that are not easily caught with artificial baits. This wariness and hesitation to strike baits is what separates musky from the other inland fishes. The muskie has been deemed the title, the fish of 10,000 casts, for the sheer difficulty involved in hooking and landing one of these magnificent fish. Fishing for muskie nowadays is much, much harder than it was, say, a hundred years ago, as over the years with habitat loss, overfishing, and other factors, large muskie lunge are now a rarity to catch with rod and reel. I am Koa, and I have been a musky fisherman for many years. And some months back I decided I wanted to capture a musky landing on camera. <laughs> but more so, to capture on camera what it takes to catch one of these magnificent fish. To share the story of the fisher persons that devote much time, effort, and other resources into a form of recreational fishing that is absolutely unlike any other in our world. Musky fishing is a type of fishing that is physically exhausting and there is hardly much relaxation in the standard sense of the word. Someone could fish for days without even seeing a musky and many times when a musky finally rises it only follows the bait swimming away after wisely dismissing the bait as something unappetizing. A true musky fisher knows that a day of musky fishing will be anything but easy just to get one glimpse of a single beautiful fish. <laughs> this story begins in northern Wisconsin in the heart of the natural territory of Isak's Masquinanji, better known as the Musky Lunch, or Musky. The north woods of Wisconsin has plenty of lakes with musky. When I can, I'm able to come to this beautiful part of the United States to get some fishing in. I'm heading up north with my father, Tom, also known as Ace. He not only has musky experience under his belt, but he is also my favorite fishing partner out on the water. When up north, I usually stop here at Raleigh and Helens, the world's largest musky shop in Minocqua to add some gear to my collection. I'm anything but a wealthy man, and I have to restrain myself from buying more than one or two new lures and leaders, as they cost around $20 or more a piece but browsing their wares adds to the excitement, pondering the potentialities of what awaits me in the lake's depths. Before musky fishing, it is important to warm up with some of the easier to catch species. And just soak up the magnificence of the North Woods. Northwoods Toad. After a day or so of our fill of smallmouth, largemouth, bluegill, and walleye, Tom's brother, Jim, arrives with his wife, Denise. Jim, also known as Guido, is the best fisherman I know of. And Denise is a fine fisher as well. A lot of pink and purple. Having caught the largest muskie in these North Woods out of all fishers in my family. I'm confident that with this crew, we have good odds of landing a keeper muskie. However, there is one downside to our expedition. We are fishing in the doldrums of summer. 
sometimes called the dog days of summer, where musky fishing is anything but at its peak. Not only are the fish not that active in this time period, but the number of other fisher persons is at its highest. This will not be easy to catch a muskie. We have four days to travel to lakes in the area and try and land a muskie. Without wasting too much time, Guido geared up his poles, and he, Ace, and I all left to another lake for a chance at getting a muskie. We are testing out the waters, playing the edges near tall macrophytes, or cabbage as it's often called, as well as trying deeper depths. I caught some snails. I think the limit's one. <laughs> we pull in a bass. Yeah, measure. And even some pike. And pike are the smaller, more aggressive cousin of the muskie. Nice fish. But hours go by without even seeing a single muskie. We move around searching for where the muskie might be sitting, as muskie are lion weight predators, which means they don't waste much energy wandering around searching for food, but rather they let food come to them, where they use explosive speed to capture a meal. All right, so we're doing another pass where we got a few northerns and a bass. So we're gonna do it again. Oh, and he just had another hit. So we're gonna see if we can pull up more pike and a muskie, hopefully. Dinner. Dusk approaches, so we throw in some big topwater lures trying to lure the big muskie up from the depths as the sun disappears behind the tree line. I've got a big muskie sized chug bug on, a lure that has gotten me a keeper muskie in the past. And wham, I have a fish on. It's putting up a really good fight. But alas, it's just a nice smallmouth bass. It's not too big, man. That's a nice one, man. It's got to be 19, 18 anyway. So day one, summer, no muskie, we didn't see any, but we caught some good fish. Day two, shift two. Our morning shift did not bring that much excitement, except some ducks. We're being trailed by a bunch of ducks. I hope you attract a muskie. Rest my weary arm and go with the spinner bait. You can only throw this for so long. Yeah. Throwing heavy musky lures for hours on end is strenuous on the back and shoulder muscles. So at times we switch to lighter tackle that fishes for more species that still includes musky. What is that, John? Shift two, no musky. Jim got a nice pike and Tom got a nice perch. So we'll try again. So two full four hour shifts just passed without even seeing a muskie. It's a bit discouraging, but at the same time, that's just muskie fishing. But there are other things to do when resting from muskie fishing, like spy on all the other fishes in these northern waters. Or just check out what the woods have to offer. Day three.
I'm up early to greet some coffee, get in the car, and drive the boat to another lake with Ace and Guido. Mm. Watch out, look at the little land right there. Oh, that was awesome. It's a beautiful morning with the loons landing right next to us. And that's just one of the joys of this type of fishing. It's being out in nature with a good fishing partner or two to enjoy it all with. Trying to wrap the Who is this? Ah, uh, I can see it, Luke. Don't worry about the net. Guido wastes no time landing a pike. Well, this is a good spot though. I just pulled up a bunch of bait fish. And Ace also lands a small pipe. Things are looking good this morning. Good work, Ace. Alright, so Ace and Guido have fish not even 10 minutes into this. And soon after, Jim gets our first musky follow. <laughs> That makes all our hearts skip a beat or two. Even though it wasn't huge, the muskies seem to be moving today. Maybe, just maybe we can hook one. Ace gets a dinker before we move to a new spot. And without much action for hours except a small largey, I finally raise a small muskie. All right, so I just had a small muskie dink my shad wrap twice. We're gonna go back and get him, hopefully. It was interesting because uh, a perch followed at first. Oh yeah. And I saw the perch and then the muskie just came out of nowhere. The maneuvering that I'm doing at the end of my cast is generally called a figure eight. Oh, oh, it's back. Yep, but I got a weed. Yeah. Problem is I got a weed. Oh, it's still there. It's still there. I do this at the end of every cast, as musky will often strike during this phase of a retrieval. And even with the weed on, it's a good idea to leave the lure in the water for a bit. We leave a buoy out and fish the spot for a while, even though it's not a huge musky, maybe only three feet or so. But a muskie's a muskie, and soon enough it raises again. It just oh, doesn't back. strike. Yeah. Yeah. My camera barely captures the small muskie in frame. Good flash. After hours of fishing and only getting follows, all under a hot sun, well, one can go a little crazy, especially when the butterflies start guiding the way to musky. It's like Lord of the Rings that just told us, You will catch your musky now. Go this way. Follow me. My back muscles are sore, and the best way to relax from a day of musky fishing is with some good old regular fishing. I'm lucky 13. And that's another one. Guido and Ace, the Bass Masters. Even though the bass and pike aren't exactly our priority target species, they do make for some good eats. Yeah, what should I when should I start trying this thing? I'll deep fry a couple of mosquitoes for you too. <laughs> and Guido gets some defense from the mosquitoes as he prepares the fish for dinner. Mosquitoes in the batter. Oh, you got it on video. Yeah. Yeah, 
I used this night to do some research on some of the other local lakes, picking out spots within the lakes that have good edges, transitions, and potential for big muskie. They're out there, somewhere. So it's about 5.30. There's a nice fog lifting off this lake. We're gonna head to another one. Ah, last day to get a musky for me in the summer. There's only two things I like getting up early for. And musky fishing is one of them. I'll let you guess what the other is. We're off to fish a lake that I have not fished in over a decade. I just had a good feeling about it the night before when I was scouting out the maps. Turn around back all the way down here. And my hunch would pay off. Day four. The day is almost too nice for decent musky fishing. The perch are still after my figure eight. And after hours of casting and pulling up weeds, our only excitement has been watching the loons. But Ace finally lands a fish. My lure is bigger than your fish. <laughs> Not a huge fish, but a fish nonetheless. Remembering the maps from the previous night, there is one last spot on this lake that I want to check out. It is the mouth of an outlet. And considering that muskie are truly a species of rivers and currents, I want to check out an area with a bit of a natural current. And sure enough, very soon after hitting the mouth, a 40-inch muskie follows my large, soft plastic bait. It's exciting. Someone's got to pull a muskie here. And we throw all types of lures near it. I'm going to throw something a little lighter, a little flash. Maybe we'll like that more, so. There's a lot of minerals right there. We even get a follow from a smaller muskie. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. I don't know, but Something. it's a world right there. Oh, I see it. I see it. You got a muskie. Is he following? Yep. Yeah. Not as big as the other one. It's right there. Huh? He's right there. Is that my little one now? Yep. I still see him. He's only like a 20. But, nada. Another day, a couple follows, no hits. If it was easy, everyone would do it. The nighttime offers one last shift. All right, last shifts before I have to leave. I uh, brought in a ringer. This is Denise. She's got a nice 47 inch muskie under her belt. On this lake. On this lake, so between uh, her and Jim, I think I think we can get one. We only got a couple hours here, but we got this. Denise just landed this largemouth on her first or second cast. But once again, aside from Denise's nice large mouth with the pink crankbait and Guido's small pike, not even a follow from a muskie.
The dog days of summer offered not even a single muskie for the catching. Fortunately, we will be able to come back to the North Woods in a few months when the muskie are more active. I really want to capture and share a muskie landing on video. In a couple of months, I'm back up north with A. Singuido, and now we are joined with another experienced muskie angler, my cousin Nick. Also, joining our fishing crew is John, who specializes in crappie fishing, but also dabbles in muskie fishing. We have a few days to try and land a muskie, and this is definitely the crew that can make it happen. On this day, Nick joins me and my father on a large lake. Yep, I haven't musky fished in a while. I'm ready to go out there and flail for some musky. Nice. Our start is a little shaky. So we got to the lake and we forgot the boat key. <laughs> but that, that might be good luck. What? So what's this wee? You got a mouse in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> After Guido delivered the boat key, we were on our way. Today, the muskie are moving. Early on, Nick has a follow from a decent sized muskie. Then I saw perhaps a 50 inch muskie follow my spinnerbait. Maybe what was like a 50 inch muskie. Follow my uh, big spinnerbait up with no interest. So we're definitely gonna fish here for a bit. That's bigger than four feet long. We fished that spot for almost two hours, hoping to land this big 50 incher, but we didn't even see it again. We pull up some dinkers. And we get another follow. But six hours fishing heavy lures, we raised three muskie and caught zero. Still a great day. Time for a little rest and food and back out for another five hour shift with Nick. So Nick and I are back out, finish out the day. We had uh, about an hour and a half rest from that morning shift. We're gonna get one, we're gonna get one. All right, well, it's been uh, a little slow. Nick had a follow from maybe a 35 inch. Uh, a storm is brewing behind us, coming at us. We don't know how much more time we got, but we're gonna try to get one in. Yeah, there's some stuff moving. After 11 hours musky fishing the previous day, my back muscles are definitely feeling it. But that doesn't stop Nick and me from venturing to yet another lake in search of some muskie. So Nick and I are doing another fishing session. We're gonna catch some muskie today. Let's see what happens. The fish are hot on this day, mostly the largies. That might be heat inside. Throwing half ounce spinner baits is great because you can catch bass, pike, and musky. Fishing a steep bank, Nick informs me he has a follow. Alright, so Nick just moved up maybe a 40 inch muskie at staging on this point right here. So we're gonna work this area a little bit and see if we can uh, get this little guy in the boat.
We fished these steep banks for a while. And bam, I hook something that is fairly big. Ah, but it's just a nice northern pike. Another six hour shift without a single muskie. It is tiring, the back muscles feel as if someone has been whacking them with baseball bats, and the hands are sore and stiff, and a part of the mind is saying, why the heck are you doing this to yourself? Yeah, so with musky fishing, you really have to have patience at a, as a quality, and what were you saying, Nick? Drive? A lot of drive. A lot of drive. You have to accept the fact that you may fish a whole day, weekend, or even a week, and not catch a fish. Yep, but that's the way it goes. You can't make them bite. And yet, after a couple of hours of rest, Nick and I head out for another four hours on another lake. Henry David Thoreau once said, Many men go fishing all of their lives without knowing that it is not fish they are after. There is truth to Thoreau's words. Each one of these men is fishing, but each for a different cause. Each one is out on the boat putting a line in the water to satisfy some internal craving that goes beyond landing a beautiful panfish or a large bass or a night's meal, or some giant musky beast lurking in the depths. And really, not that many fisher persons will stop in the moment to wonder as to why they are fishing, as it is just too enjoyable in that moment to wonder of such things. Catch a musky! Nick is confident as we head out while the other men are testing their luck and skills on other lakes. But, like us on this day, they don't get any musky, but some really nice specimens of other species. That's a 35-inch northern pike, a very large specimen for this part of North America. This day is relatively warm and rainy. Nick and I are waiting for the skies to clear up. The weather has given us a window of maybe an hour. This is gonna be perfect because this cold front has just sort of shown up. Musky fishing is probably gonna be real good until tomorrow and it's gonna get bad. We squeeze in a few pike, but very soon we have to bail. The winds are changing and that is moving right at us. And that's not some Fishing in rain is one thing, but that's got lightning. Live to fish another day. We'll be moving out here in five. Whenever reading the musky magazines or listening to the chatter in the bait shops, they always say don't bother fishing when the cold front arrives. The musky won't bite. Well, we are stubborn. And we know that you can't catch a fish if your line isn't in the water. This day has got to be the day. We've paid our dues and we've put in our hours. We've put in thousands of casts and I've done thousands of figure eights to no avail. The cold weather has the pike stirring. And even the perch. These are good signs. We even get a nice 40 inch musky following our baits for a couple hours. All right, so I just had about a 40 inch at least uh, musky follow my lure. So 
We got the marker buoy out, and we're gonna throw a bunch of stuff at this spot and try to pick that Sheila up. So, get to it, boys. Yep. But another spot might just prove to be more successful. We're feeling it. The confidence that one of us is going to hook this big fish. We're not even, it's like three casts into it and you already saw a musky surface. We're really feeling it. And suddenly Guido has a serious fish on. Nick and I know it's a beast just by seeing Guido's rod bending in half. Nick gets the extra poles out of the way and I hit the trim switch to get the outboard right, motor there. lifted and out of the way. But I have to move as Nick needs to reposition as Jim battles this giant fish. This muskie is strong. It's a nice fish. It's within oh, these moments yeah. right now that make all our past efforts worth every single Whoa. second. We leave the muskie in the water while unhooking the lure to cause it less stress. This is a big muskie. We quickly get a measurement of about 45 inches, and even though we brought a scale, we decide not to weigh her and get her back in the water as soon as possible. She is probably around 14 years old and weighs at least 30 pounds. We give her one last quick measure to verify. She put up a great fight, and we got her back in the water and on her way so she could spawn another generation of fighters for future fishers. Thank you. So Jim just got a 45 inch musk, which is awesome. And that was a great fight that you just saw. The biggest one I've ever got. Biggest one he's ever had. And I dropped one of my GoPros at the bottom of the lake, but it's totally worth it to get that musk. Well actually, you know, I do have this, which is pretty cool. And the action wouldn't stop there. So Jim just got, first cast back out after getting his 46, he, he hooked another, but he got off. I think it's a good time to get some musky. And then Nick hooks a musky of his own.
We've put in so much work over these two fishing trips in the summer and fall, and the reward has us all overjoyed. Musky fishing almost requires a partner, and I will say that it has been a pleasure to get on the boats and fish with all of my fishing partners during this quest. And I'm very thankful for and proud of Jim and Nick for landing those muskie. I know my next muskie is waiting out there for me for a future day. And I know my fishing buddies will be eager and ready to go fishing with me when that future comes. Thank you, thank you. Good to see you again, buddy. It's a pleasure, buddy. Group up. Hey, I group up. Group up. Group up. Group Group Mmm, rico.